Normally, I request two cases for review. That is so that I can highlight multiple color options and maybe bring out some inconsistencies in color surfaces, but also it makes my job so much more efficient because before I go inside and tell you about all the features, I've already actually, in most cases, have built a system, understand what's going on, understand the drawbacks and the positives, because that's the only way you can actually understand what the product is all about. And the new Fantex NV5, I was skeptical initially, but man, this thing is a rock star. Fantex basically pulled a Fantex from 10 years ago by reducing the price, being extremely aggressive and competitive in the market. So the NV5 was supposed to launch at 129, which is quite steep considering it has no fans, but it's still very beautiful, elegant enclosure. Not a fish tank, it's more of a traditional interior layout, but we'll talk about some of the drawbacks and some of the incredibly impressive improvements as well for this type of mid-tower category. And so the final price is $99, and some of you may say, well, why don't you just spend $40 more to get the Lian Li Lee O11 Dynamic Evo, which brings you so many options, but on the opposite side of that coin, Michael, his favorite saying, <laughs> or on the flip side of the coin, the flip side of the coin. But on the flip side of that coin, on the flip side of that coin, so on the flip side, on the flip side, on the flip side of that coin, I actually appreciate the simplicity that goes behind something like the NV5, giving you a very traditional mid-tower building assembly, but without any major hiccups, you know? Some of those hiccups carry over from the bigger NV7, so like there's no 140 mil fan support anywhere on the enclosure. So 120s only on the side, in front of the power supply, shroud the top and the back as well. But man, is this a sharp looking enclosure? From a lemon to a potato, how many fruits would you give it? I give this a full five potato on my scale. <laughs> what is five potato? It's a proper meal, that's what it is. So the glass corner is beautiful, there's no frame there, revealing all your components in a proper way. Very much like a dual chamber would, but this isn't one. All the panel gaps are fine, the finish is nice and smooth, although I feel like not many people would like the triangular feet at the bottom. It fits the larger cases, the V7 because it gives you additional airflow from the bottom, but here it's a very compact case. I get that they have to continue with the design ID compared to something like the 4000D from Corsair and my Fractal Design. Uh, it's a proper compact mid tower, you know? So having that triangle at the bottom feels kind of weird. This is the last time you're spending money on the power supply. Why? Because this is for a lifetime with all possible upgrades. Mm, why? Be quiet and enjoy the Dark Power Pro 13. Why? With their signature aluminum case and silent wings fan, individually sleeved cables with cable combs for that first class experience, with two PCIe 5.0 600 watt 12 volt high power cables. Now that's intimidating. Why? 80 plus titanium efficiency with an overclocking key? So truly a power supply for now and the beyond. Check it out below. Now the interior is very interesting because it's almost like a hybrid between a dual chamber interior versus uh, our traditional mid tower of this size. So first of all, the power supply does not extend all the way to the front here. It's kind of cut off to allow for that side ventilation and an additional bottom intake fan over here for your GPU and for your internals. And this thing will only support 120 mil fans, eight of them. So uh, you can do a 360 on the side, 360 at the top, 120 for rear and 120 for that bottom additional intake. EATX motherboard support of course is available. And because we have this unrestricted area all the way up to the front, you can do 440, length GPUs with 170 millimeters in height. So basically anything in the market should fit here. Interestingly, Fantex pre-routes these IO cables to exit from the bottom of the motherboard. So for some of them are fine, like your audio, but for USBs and everything, I had to reroute from these square rubber grommets that uh, actually do a pretty decent job. And now some interesting features about this interior. We have a built-in GPU bracket with two-way adjustment with padding and you can remove one of the thumb screws at the bottom for additional vertical movement. It supports the GPU and it's not too intrusive. At the back you can see there's a combined PCIe cover that spans three slots, so theoretically better for airflow underneath the GPU, but mainly this is a visual benefit. The bottom dust filter is absolutely massive. You can slide it out from the front or the back, which is considered but your main intake is very likely going to be on the side and that metal mesh is really good for airflow but for long-term dust accumulation you will have to clean the case. I have always appreciated their direction with integrated case lighting and here is no different. So we have the shroud getting illuminated and accentuated by this uh, RGB so really good looking profile and color options that sync so well with everything else that Fantex makes. So DRGB is built into the IO so you can change modes and colors. Although you see how close those USB ports are and I wish they were slightly 
uh, a few more millimeters apart, but USB-C is 10 gigabits per second. This tiny rubber piece covers up where the optional lighting accessories would slot in. It is a fairly pricey DLC, but it will definitely elevate the lighting on the exterior and on the interior as well. My only thing is that I'm curious how well it will be received because of its price. And it's like, you know, it's cheaper than the case, but then you add those two together and you're you know, high up there. Of course, an accessory box is included with your instructions manual. They're definitely leading the way in the manual because this thing is so often overlooked by so many other brands. This is the screw box for the white enclosure. So as you can see, all the screws are silver to match the uh, case. And for the black one, they're all black like usual, but this is a very handy little compartment. The PSU mount is angled, so it just slides into position and you can remove this front cover to access your cables. In theory, it's a good idea if you want to, let's say, replace a cable without needing to take out the power supply, but if the power supply is fairly short, you're gonna have to go in fairly deep in there. So uh, I think it's be easier just to take the power supply out, but also an optional screen accessory is coming later as well. So two DLCs so far for the MD5, and this one is a fairly unique way to spice up the shroud. I haven't seen a screen on the shroud from a brand yet. You know, it's, a, it's not a third party accessory. This is coming from Fantex. And I'm looking forward to seeing what that's all about. I do love this tiny flap toe for discrete cable routing for smaller cables. Brilliant. Both the top and the side fan mounts are part of the frame. The impressive thing is when all side panels are removed, there's very little flex on from the top to the bottom, which is really good for confidence of like being able to mount things on the top without needing to put all the panels in place. But the thinner interior pieces do bend quite easily. As you can see, the bottom fan bracket is removable, but keep in mind how close the fan gets to the shroud for pre-routing any cables. Behind the motherboard IO, we have two Velcro straps for a simple organization. And behind the motherboard, they've simplified this cover that can be used to hide cables and is actually your only storage option. So three hard drives or four SSDs. It's actually not bad for not having your dedicated standard drive cage. And it can also be removed if you don't care for it or if you're committing to motherboard storage only. Now, to the most part, I am a big fan of plastic channels for cable management. And here they're good once you route everything, but they're way too close to the rubber grommets. So passing the 24 pin cable is absolutely, it's, it's a nightmare scenario. Like it shouldn't be that difficult to be able to pass a few plastic clips with the cable through the rubber grommet, but it is way too difficult. Although I will say the Velcros are best in class in terms of being able to remove them, route everything, put them back together and secure everything in place. And in the end, this is definitely going to be my new gaming enclosure. With all the panels closed and enough fans to fill all the spots, the enough fans part is quite important because otherwise it looks kind of empty, but it definitely, in my opinion, at least looks better than the NV7, which is kind of too large for the types of systems that I enjoy building with, you know, simple AIOs, no crazy water cooling, you know, more fans and a nice beefy GPU. For me, it's kind of like the right amount of case for systems that I like to work with, especially if you commit to other Fantex products like the new D30 fans, the new AIO, they all look so good together from the color uniformity to lighting intensity and accuracy without the need for any software. And that's a huge part for me personally because all the built-in effects and the performance of all the lighting stuff that is built into the case, you know, controller for RGB is actually really decent. And I don't need to go into Aurora or MSI Mystic, whatever, in order to configure stuff. Like I prefer to plug everything into the case IO for lighting and go from there. Now, as for temperatures, the case does not come with any fans because the idea, or at least the concept is that you're supposed to populate in there something that would satisfy your eyes, right? Make it beautiful, make it your own, but still doing my standard temperature testing with three additional fans like I've done with the NV7. I mean, it grants identical result to the NV7. So it's not, uh, you know, it's not an airflow performance enclosure. It's supposed to go with some AIO and plenty of fans in there. So that's kind of where we are at in terms of performance. So it's not gonna be a chart topper, but I think the idea is to create something that you'd enjoy looking at and something definitely that is not going to be living on your floor, but on your desk. The biggest issues in my eyes with this enclosure are the plastic cable channels because they're way too close to the rubber grommets. And so passing any of those cables through is weirdly difficult. Since Fantex is putting their foot down with only supporting 120 mil fans, that's gonna receive some criticism. If you have 140 mil fans or a 280 millimeter all-in-one cooler, you would have to use something else in here. Now you have to consider the price of additional fans, I guess, on top of the case price. So the NV5, 
at $99 becomes, you know, somewhere between $150 to $200, depending on how many fans and what type of fans you get. But here are the ones that we would definitely recommend, RGB and non. Many people were expecting a smaller version of the NV7 with the power supply behind the motherboard tray. So everything is on display in the main chamber. And we didn't really get that. It's kind of a hybrid between your standard mid tower and dual chamber. And I kind of like it, but I also understand that it would be nice to remove the power supply out of the equation so that we can focus on your main components. And it would be fantastic to see something like that in this compact form factor. But they are compensating with the RGB lighting around the power supply shroud. So I get that. And I'm looking forward to testing the DLCs, the DRGB kit and the screen on the power supply shroud, just to see what the, what the whole fuss is about in the future of buying like a $99 case, buying $200 worth of fans, you know, whatever hardware cost, and then making the $99 case with your DLCs like close to over $200, you know? So we'll we'll see what that comes out to, but let me know what you think of the new NV5. I know I said it's a rock star. I still feel like that because I love this type of enclosure where it kind of guides you in a very particular build scenario, kind of like with an ITX system. Uh, and I like that we have some options for, for cooling, but like, not totally crazy of rotating your motherboard situation. Like if you want that, go with Lian Lee. If you want something a bit more simple and elegant and slightly more, you know, beautiful, the MV5, I would say is a, is a pretty awesome enclosure. Definitely is going to be in my recommendation, but let me know what you think. I'm Dmitri, thanks so much for watching. I'll talk to you in the next video. Double pop, you're welcome. <laughs>